Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan and I love gadgets. Today I'm going to be talking about the Redmi Note 6 Pro. Specifically, I'm gonna be reviewing it because I've been using this phone for the past few weeks. It's just become like my main phone. Yeah, I am here now to tell you all about it, to tell you whether it's worth buying, to tell you what's good and what's bad, and yeah, pretty much everything you need to know about the Redmi Note 6 Pro. Now, this is a very, very cheap phone. It's only about $180 if you buy it from gearbest.com. If you wanna buy it from Amazon, and then it's a bit more expensive, but it's roughly in the $200 range or around about £160, £180, depending on where you buy it from. So yeah, uh, this is a really cheap phone and to be honest, I really was not expecting much from it. What can you really expect from a phone that costs under $200 compared to say the $1,000 you'd have to spend for the latest iPhone, the latest Samsung? But I am actually really, really pleasantly surprised with how good this phone is. And it's basically replaced my, albeit a bit older, Samsung phone, the Samsung S8. So first, I'm gonna take you through the specs of this camera really quickly, uh, just so it's not a camera, it's a phone. I'm gonna take you through the specs of this phone very quickly, just the main things you really need to consider. So firstly, this is a Note phone, so it's obviously quite big. It's got a 6.26 inch screen. The PPI of the screen, so the pixels per inch, is 403. It's got four cameras in total, two at the front and two at the back. The two front ones have 20 megapixels and two megapixel resolution. The ones at the back have 12 megapixels and five megapixels. The front cameras are mostly for taking selfies. That's why it's such a big resolution, it's very sharp. But the rear cameras are, uh, the lenses are a lot better, the optics are a lot better. So it's much better for taking actual good shots of say like scenery or like a portrait or something. But yeah, I'll show you examples of both soon. The version that I have has 64 gigabytes of internal memory. However, you also can expand the memory with a micro SD card, which is awesome. Not a lot of phones allow you to do this anymore, or at least not a lot of kind of uh, the flagship phones uh, kind of take take that out for some reason, don't allow you to do that. But so you can basically expand the memory of this phone to up to 256 gigabytes, which is a lot. It's got a 4000 mAh battery, which actually lasts a really long time. So those are the main specs basically. And just looking at those, you can kind of see why it's a little bit cheaper. I mean, the screen, the resolution isn't amazing. It's not, it's not gonna compete with the iPhone 10 and the latest Samsung or even the latest like Google XL, Pixel XL, whatever it's called. Uh, but it's still pretty good, uh, it's not bad. But let's take a quick look at the design of the phone because I mean, it's quite important these days you want the phone to look good and be easy to use. So let's take a closer look at what this phone looks like, I guess. Uh, yeah, so the Redmi Note 6 Pro, like I said, it's got a 6.2 inch six screen. Uh, the body is quite thick. I mean, compared to some phones that I've used anyway, it's got an eight millimeter thickness. But to be honest, thickness isn't really a consideration for me, at least because the vast majority of people, when they buy a phone, they buy a case with it, which increases the thickness anyway. So yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't find this phone uncomfortable to use. It's not ridiculously thick. Um, it's, I mean, you can see here, it's still pretty thin and this is with a case on it. So it's actually slightly thinner than this. I mean, the size and the shape of the phone is more reminiscent of say like the Samsung Galaxy Note series or like the Pixel XL. So yeah, that's why I guess it's got the Note in the name. It is a big phone. So if you are used to the smaller phones, the kind of standard size. This may take a little of getting used to. I mean, it did for me. I had just a Samsung S8, which is significantly smaller than this. But to be honest, I prefer these bigger phones. It feels like you can do a lot more with them. Um, the screen is clearer. The text is bigger. The images are bigger when you play games and stuff. So I prefer these big phones. But yeah, it is fairly sizable. Um, not quite as big as maybe the flagship phones, but it's still pretty big. I mean, compared to the size of my hand, it's, yeah, covers basically all of it. But yeah, uh, it's a big phone, but it's not so big that it's uncomfortable to use. This phone features a notch style design as reminiscent of the, the more recent iPhones, which kind of keep all the cameras on this little kind of notch here, this little black bit that goes down and kind of allows the screen to go all the way up here. So, and this is a very modern design. I think it looks good. I prefer it than just having a big black bar at the top. So yeah, as you can see this kind of notch style, I think it looks really good. Uh, keeping the cameras all at the top and allows the screen to be a little bit bigger and yeah I just think it's certainly a modern style and it doesn't look even though it's only cheap It's only $200. It looks like it could be more expensive I think just because of this 
There is no manual button at the bottom, so there's no kind of like physical button. The only physical buttons are the volume and the power, uh, the power buttons at the side. So yeah, there's kind of like an invisible button here that you can press and activate things and slide things around. And yeah, uh, so it's very kind of sleek. The only thing I would say about the design which maybe kind of disappoints me slightly is that it does have quite a thick um, black kind of bezel. Um, is that how you say it? I don't know how to say that word. So unlike some phones which go edge to edge, this phone doesn't do that. I mean, that's kind of what you're paying for, or at least what you're sacrificing in terms of how cheap this phone is. You're not going to have the screen that just goes edge to edge. And it's, particularly at the bottom, there's quite a big um, black kind of border you can see. I mean, it's not a huge, it's not a deal breaker for me, but some people really like the kind of edge to edge design, but you're not going to get that with such a cheap phone like this. Ooh, it still looks pretty good though, I think. So let's take a closer look at the screen because obviously that's what you're gonna be looking at for the whole time. So you want it to look bright and colorful and sharp. And yeah, I think the Redmi Note 6 does do all those things, but it's not the best in the world. I mean, it has a resolution, like I said, of 1080 by 2260, was it? Uh, let me just check that, 2280 I should say. It's not near what the iPhone can do, the latest iPhone. But the, to be honest, that's still a lot of pixels to play with. Um, if As long as you're not looking at the phone like this close, you're not gonna use this as a VR phone, you know, in these VR headsets, uh, That then that resolution probably wouldn't be good enough. But just on a day-to-day -day basis, you are not gonna notice any pixelation. You cannot see individual pixels. The icons look good. It's very colorful. It's very bright if you put the brightness to a maximum. Um, I mean, you can take a look here. I mean, it's very bright. It's, it's only if you go very, very close to the screen that you can start to see some pixels forming. And for anyone, who, unless you are really, really, really wanting the absolute clearest crystal clear image and you're willing to spend a thousand dollars to get that, then I think this phone will be absolutely fine and you will not notice any difference and nor will anyone else. It doesn't look out of date and it doesn't look old. Now onto my favorite feature of this camera. Oh, it's not a camera, it's a phone, which is the cameras, because it has four of them. Um, and I do like to take a photo. I am a bit of, well, I'm not good at photography, but I do like the option of taking some photos. Um, and yeah, I think that the fact that this $200 phone has four cameras is, it's pretty astounding. I'm not quite sure how they managed to do that and how they managed to make a profit doing that. But yeah, Xiaomi, this phone, which this phone is from, obviously me, me, what's it called? Redmi? Yeah, yeah, four cameras on this phone. Um, two at the front, two at the back. We'll talk about the front ones first. Um, the front ones have 20 megapixels and two megapixels respectively. Now, I think the reason it does this is so that you can take these 3D photos or these refocused photos. Basically, it's a selfie camera. It's primarily designed for you to take selfies with your duck face and you know, for Instagram, whatever. So basically what it allows you to do with these two separate lenses, two separate cameras, is refocus the background so you can take a selfie of yourself and make the background blurred so that your face looks more, I don't know, uh, in focus or it looks more prominent and it apparently makes selfies look better. So that's why it has this kind of pointless two megapixel camera. So the front cameras, while it's good at taking selfies, very, very sharp, very clear because of these 20 megapixels, that's a lot of pixels. You can zoom right in, you can crop it, and yeah, it's still gonna be a sharp image. But like most front-facing cameras on phones, the front two lenses aren't gonna be the best for taking, you know, really good shots. I mean, the color is kind of bland. It looks a little bit kind of basic, um, not very much in terms of, uh, HDR or um, dynamic range. For that, you need to use the rear cameras, which as you can see are a lot more advanced already just from looking at them. Um, so yeah, these shoot 12 megapixel and five megapixels respectively. And again, you can use that to refocus the background or whatever, but um, even though it has less megapixels in total, the optics inside these cameras are a lot better. They can take really, really sharp photos with excellent light, excellent color, and excellent dynamic range, particularly for the price of the phone. I mean, comparing it to the latest Samsung isn't really that fair because the price is so different, but even comparing it to that, this is a much better camera than I was expecting. You can take really good photos with it. I think this is the main key feature of this phone is the cameras. Um, they take really good photos and you have complete manual control. There are a lot of different settings, a lot of different modes you can use. So yeah, I genuinely believe that the cameras on the phone, particularly the real ones, can be used for some decent photography, not just there, uh, you know, as an excuse to have it, but it is actually a good phone for photography. Unfortunately, when it comes to video, it's not as good. Uh, there are very few options when it comes to video with this phone. It can only shoot at HD resolution at 1080p. Can't shoot in 4K like many phones can do now. 
Um, there's hardly any options. There's not really much in manual control. So yeah, you can basically shoot HD video, but that's about it. Um, I need, I did shoot some video of some fireworks display. I mean, this is obviously at night and yeah, you can kind of see what the quality is. It's still decent quality. It still looks good. And if you're just going to be videoing your mates or just random stuff, um, then yeah, HD video is absolutely fine. Now let's talk about the performance of this phone in general, just how quick it is, how speedy it is, how kind of responsive it is. I found this phone to be very responsive, as responsive as any other phone I've used, even the much more expensive ones. Um, and yeah, I found it to be quick to load apps, quick to load games even, and yeah, I have had absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. Now there are some now there are some caveats to that and I'll go go into it later. But basically the the Redmi Note 6 Pro uses a Snapdragon 636 processor and that is basically designed for these cheaper phones. It's designed to be a cheap processor, but also to be able to run the latest software, albeit maybe at a lower graphical level. So in terms of usage, in terms of swiping, in terms of keying in things, it's absolutely fine, instantaneous, as you would expect from any phone these days. Now the sacrifice that you make with this cheaper processor is that games that have kind of intense graphics or like the highest, the biggest games on phones, for, for example, Need for Speed or any of like the Battle Royale games, uh, you cannot really run those on the highest the highest graphical level. The game will automatically usually detect what phone you have and for me it set it down to the lowest graphical level. So you can run the games, you can play the games, but you can't really run them at the highest graphical level. So if that's what you're looking for, then this phone won't do it. But I have played several games with this phone. I've downloaded several games, tested it out, and not one of them failed to load. Not one of them was buggy or slow or laggy. Uh, but for some of them, it did basically automatically say that you need to run it on the lowest graphical level because uh, otherwise it just won't work. I mean, it has four gigabytes of RAM and this Snapdragon processor. That is enough to basically run any app and uh, run any game, but not at the highest graphical settings. So that's the giveaway you have. Actually, yeah, talking about I will tell you what games I did try. I tried uh, PUBG um, on this phone and it ran really, really smoothly, but it, like I said, detected, it told me to go to the lowest graphical setting. But once I did, I played a few games on it and while the controls aren't great on mobile, I mean, it's takes some getting used to, but uh, yeah, it ran very smoothly and I actually won, I actually came first. So another game called War Wings, which again is quite, uh, say, I'd say, graphically intensive. I mean, it's a 3D game. You fly around in a plane shooting other planes. Um, yeah, that was very easy to play. It never had any issues. And I don't think it even reduced the graphical settings. Um, yeah, and I, I'm quite good at that game as well. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about some other features which I think on a day-to-day -day basis might be quite important. For example, battery life. Now, that has been the bane of my existence for the past few years. Every Samsung that I've owned after a few months has just become a really bad at keeping its battery. I mean, my Samsung S8 that I've had for a year and a half, I need to charge it at least once a day, sometimes twice a day if I'm using it intensively. So I need to carry a kind of external charger, you know, a power bank around with me. It's just a pain in the ass. But surprisingly and thankfully, this phone has been the best phone for battery that I've used in a long time. It's got a 4,000 mAh battery. Um, yeah, it's very good when it comes to battery life in terms, in, in comparison with my other phones that I've used. The software that comes with this phone, the Android version, is actually really good. Unlike most other phones, for example, Samsung, I need to keep picking on Samsung. When you get the phone new, they put a lot of soft of their own software in the operating system. Um, and it just kind of bloats the phone. It makes it slower. It just adds, adds unnecessary stuff that you don't need. For example, this Bixby assistant which just gets on my nerves so much. None of that is on the uh, Redmi Note 6 Pro. I mean Xiaomi have put a very basic version of Android on this phone. Yeah, the IR Blaster, which is amazing. So part, I just mentioned this Mi Remote app. Basically that uses the IR Blaster so you can use this as a remote control for your for your TV, for anything that has an IR receiver. So a lot of Xiaomi products do, their speakers do, their little vacuum thing does, um, even their lights. You can get lights and all these devices with infrared uh, receivers. So you can use this as a remote to turn them off, turn them on, make them do other things, I don't know. So there is actually a lot in this phone that's not in other phones, that much more expensive phones, the much more expensive phones don't have an IR blaster or expandable storage or yeah. So, I mean, for much cheaper device, you get actually a little bit more, crazy. So that's about it, guys. The Redmi Note 6 Pro, I have been speaking a lot. I hope I have covered basically everything you wanted to know or needed to know about this phone. Yeah, I mean, I think you can tell that I am a big fan of this phone. 
I'm not going to say it's better than like a Samsung S9 or an iPhone 10 or whatever because it's not. But considering the price, it's a fifth of the price of these phones. So one fifth the cost of an iPhone 10. Uh, even a bit less, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's not five times worse. I mean, an iPhone 10 is not five times better than this. I mean, I use the same 10 apps every week and as long as I can run those pretty smoothly, I'm fine. Uh, for a $200 phone, yeah. Pretty good. Screen is good, not the best in the world, but pretty good. Can run games, can run all my apps very quickly, efficiently, and it's a big phone with a lot of real estate to play with. Great first time phone for someone, great first time phone for say like a teenager because it can run all these games. Um, and yeah, great phone for someone who's not willing to spend a thousand dollars anymore. You really can get basically 80% of what an iPhone or a really expensive Samsung phone can do. 80% of that is in this phone too. So yeah, um, there are a few other cheap phones coming out from Xiaomi and from other companies. I think people are starting to realize, or at least the companies are starting to realize they just want a similar experience or just a user-friendly phone for a lot cheaper. And I will be testing some of these other phones. For example, the Xiaomi Poco phone, I think it's called Poco phone. Yeah, that's a slightly more expensive phone, slightly more powerful. I'm gonna be testing that soon. So stay tuned if you wanna check that out. And yeah, um, but for now, if you wanna get it for the cheapest, lowest price, um, check out gearbest.com in my, uh, the link is in the description. And I think it should be $180 there now, 189, ridiculously cheap. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in this phone, maybe that's the best place to get it. Yeah, if you are interested in this phone, if you want to know more information, I have a website and I have a written review of this phone on my website, dansgadgets.com, and you'll be able to see the specs and all the details that I put there, um, and just have a read of that if, you're, if you want some more info on this phone. And if you like me, if you like gadgets, if you like hearing about them, then subscribe because I've got more coming, some smartwatches, and like I said, another cheap smartphone. Phone, um, is coming up and I will tell you all about those. Until then, I will see you around and have a good week. Bye-bye.